back to another episode of the Crappie Chronicles. I am your host, Adam Bartusik, and we are back in the metro area. And by the metro area, we talk about within 60 miles of downtown Minneapolis. We are back at the house, and the boys are unpacking. We got Pink back, finally. We didn't have him today when we were on the good old Riv. Yeah, I'm here. We back. We're getting ready to, uh, obviously, go out fishing tomorrow. And we got a fairly big winter storm, Waldo, coming in. Moderate. We're getting snow. We haven't seen snow. The drivers are going to be rough. Rough. But yeah, we're going to get some snow tomorrow. Low pressure. We're getting ready to go have some fun. And uh, yeah, really, we're kind of going to, we're going to push that 60 mile thing a little bit to the limit because everybody knows right now we don't have a lot of good ice around the metro. So we got to go searching, but I think we'll have a little bit of fun. But for now, we got some fish to cut up. Plug some batteries in and hang out with the boys. Also, if you're looking for Chronicle merch, it's up on the site. And uh, I don't have it on right now, but everyone's asking about that live hoodie. We'll, we'll just toss that up on the site now so that you guys can all go get it. Yeah. And now we're going to cut up fish and hang out. So should be interesting. Yeah, drink some beer. Drink some Break Your PB. <laughs> And now we come back to where it all began, the Twin Cities metropolitan area. Located within 60 miles of downtown Minneapolis is the fabled crappie capital that most can only dream of. Lakes and rivers sprawling with habitat, seemingly a genetic anomaly. It produces the largest top end crappies you can find anywhere in the ice belt. And these fish are largely only targetable when its waters are delicately sealed under a firm cap of ice. Teeming with the pressure of ice communities established across the lakes and the challenge of cracking the code on crappies hell-bent on moving from shallow to deep and everywhere in between, we once again find our crew coming home. Alright, so we're on a new lake today. Um, this year's been a lot of shallow, weedy backwaters, you know, just shallow water in general. Um, we finally got on a lake where we get the basin chase, so we're going to sit out here in probably anywhere from 14 to 20 feet. Um, these fish are out here riding in, riding this mud looking for bugs. Um, we're finding small groups of them right now, just, you know, 5 to 10 in a group. Um, they're super skittish though, so we're trying to figure out how we can uh, dial this in to where we can actually get in front of these groups without them uh, scurrying off every time. So dialing that in now, um, I think we've marked a few, but we haven't caught any yet. So we're just gonna keep at it, keep trolling the basin and hopefully we found the mega school and we can sit on them and do some work. Good eater. Nice eater. That one came on the flash menu. Beautiful little pinhead. And that one's going to be lunch because it is bleeding really bad and it's not that big. All right. So Waldo and I split up. And we're kind of dividing and conquering right now. Waldo and I just went over to a new little area and he caught a couple of crappies. I just caught a nice eater and I'm marking a few more. We weren't seeing much life for a while there, but now it seems like we're getting around it again. That one just came in trucked. 
that pink wonder bread pinhead. See if there's any more left. Hooked up. Crappie. Okay. First one, not a biggie, but a crop dog. And there was a school. I'm just going to see. Yep, they're still sitting down there. Nice little keeper there. Get right back down. Right back down. Hopefully, maybe we got the school fired up now. There's a solid eater. Beautiful eater. That one came on the pinhead again. And we are on a harvest mission today. Could be. Oh yeah. Gill. Yep, blue gill. That's why they were acting a little bit different. They came in a little more timid. American again? Oh, so am I. Oh, nice little white crappie. Nice to see that. Just caught that black crappie. Yeah. Now get a white crappie. Like we said before on lakes, typically when you get oh, around the whites and the blacks together, there's one of the biggest ones in the lake. So he's just a little guy, though. He's a For me. Gill. Not a bad gill. No. Had to down drag him. <laughs> no. It just rains. Oh yeah. There's another little eater on the pinhead. Feels good to be back in a basin chasing crappies around with pinhead minnows. It's one of our favorite things to do and like we've talked about, we've got our new color. This is Flash Minnow, silver sides, white glow top and belly. Oh, and Bart's hooked up too. Would you look at that? It's real little though. It is very <laughs> little. But we're on fish, we're catching some meters, and we're using pinheads. Back to our favorite thing in the world. It's hard to beat a good pinhead bite, but we got two colors at Thorn. I just mentioned it a little bit ago, but we've got uh, Reverse Wonder Bread and Flash Minnow in three sizes for each, and there's still some left in stock. There's not much, but... Uh, especially if you want 116. Yeah, especially if you want the 16th ouncer, which is usually our bread and butter. And, uh, yeah, they're almost out. So definitely, if you haven't picked one up yet, pick them up, because these two colors are deadly, and they're, uh, they're two colors that aren't in the regular Pinhead Pro lineup, and they're only available at Thorn. So definitely check them out, and check out our rods while you're at it. Eater. Oh, 
little guy. A little bit nicer. Go! Oh, Jeez, oh, 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 oh. oh! want the GoPro. Another little Eda. Right to the pile. I don't know what Pink's cooking tonight, but he's cooking up something for us, so it'll be pretty interesting to see what he does. He's always got something. Oh, I think he said he's doing something with flatbreads, so on a Traeger. That's going to be delicious, so we're going to have some fun tonight with some cooking and at Bart's new house he just got, so yeah, it'll be a good weekend, and I'm marking another... Yep, and he did. Ooh. Ooh, angry guy. There's a nice one. These are just perfect eaters. Look at that, I got a derp fish. He's been caught before for sure. Um, the flash minnow again. That color is such a good color. Stained water, a lot of these fish chase bait out here, so... It's a... Uh, it's a really good color. Anytime you're fishing on a, a bait fish bite or minnow bite, that flash minnow is gonna be it's gonna be pretty stinking deadly, I would assume. So definitely picks them up, but yeah, we've got massive eaters and we're gonna be cutting some fish up for a while tonight. I'm not sure how the other boys are doing, but they're kind of on the other side of this little basin here and it seems like there's just fish all the way through it so we're gonna keep bebopping around and see if we can't get on some more and then maybe in a little bit after we whack and stack some more eaters go for some bigger ones but right now we're finally on ice in the metro can't complain Ooh, there we go no it's acting gilly let's see Oh, it is. <laughs> Bluegill. I could tell though, because that first batch of crappies that came in, they were chasing me all over. We were pretty charged up. Here's another one. Let's see what we got. Another gill. I'm on the gills. But they're aggressive. They're eating that pinhead. Pinhead minnow. Pretty sick. This water's pretty stained so hitting them with that wonder bread hooked up there we go Let's see what we got I'm guessing crappie it came racing up oh yeah another eater sick flash minnow chronicle pinhead sick that's the 16th ounce <laughs> heck yeah all right finally got one we've been chasing them around a little bit these are good like eater size i do have another one down there so i'm just going to dish this one on the ice and get right back down because the schools are not very big and they seem to be super skittish so you only get a couple shots at them before they're gone. So I'm just gonna try to feed one more. He's already racing up to it actually. Let's see what happens here. Oh God, here we go. Here we go. Yep. Got him. That one's heavier. Let's see what we got. That was an aggressive, aggressive bite though. I don't know. It's either a donk or something else. <laughs> Crushed it though. White bass would be cool. Ooh. Oh yeah. Nice crappie. Heck yeah. That's a little better one. Probably like an 11. That was sick. Came in and just torched that flash minnow. 16th ounce. Kind of the bread and butter size, but I think Griff's, Griff's dealing an eighth ounce and still catching, so. They're aggressive when they want it. They just run it down and get it. But another awesome eater. I'm just gonna throw the deucer back in, see if we can get another one. Because there were even a few more there. Oh yeah, they're just chilling. Oh great. In the hood, we're a mess. All right. 
Just back down. I mean, we could drill holes from here to Waldo and just get in the hole. Whitey. Super shiny silver ones out here. Well, cool, they looked a little different than the river ones. Got one. See what we got. Ooh. He just got feisty. He just realized he's hooked. Ooh, nice one. Nice eater. He is super thick. Super thick. What a beautiful fish. Look at all the purple. It's a gorgeous little eater. Nice. All right. Like Waldo said, we're getting back on them. And uh, just going to get back down there in case there's a couple more. But show you guys what I caught it on. I got to get the snow off this. We finally have snow. But that's the uh, pink Pinhead Pro, pink Wonder Bread. And. I don't know, all the hype's about the Tika Flash. We like the Tika Flash. We've shown you guys. We've caught a bunch of fish on it. But Sometimes they, like that they, like, they like that Pinhead Pro. It's an OG for a reason. Don't forget about it. Everybody's forgetting about it. It's one of the best baits out there. Especially if you're basing crappie fishing. So I put on the eighth ounce pinhead on that one, um, just to get down there a little faster since these fish are moving. And uh, when you're out in these basins, these fish tend to not care about the size of the bait. A lot of times the bigger the better. So went and switched over to that. Uh, put on the flash minnow that we designed and uh, first drop. All right, so now we're starting to catch a few. The hype level is not super high, but now we're in this area. Seems to be some more fish drifting around, so we're just kind of drilling it out. Hopefully, we'll get to a point where we have quite a few holes in this area. Like a day like today, even with the live, you can look around and it's tough to stay with the fish. So hopefully we get it drilled out, we can just kind of hole hop around and as soon as you mark one, if they're crappies, they're getting them to bite right away. But there are some gills and catfish mixed in here. We haven't tied into a cat yet, but it could get exciting if we do. So. We're gonna keep moving. We got a pile of eaters already. The goal is to get more eaters, possibly catch a big one, but right now we're just gonna keep drilling holes. <laughs> it's a process is where we're at right now. So we're gonna keep drilling. Griff, I think just found some fish. So I'm gonna go over there, see what he's doing. He came in and crushed it. Very typical of a white crappie. No hesitation. That's why white crappies are fun. But I had some bluegills down there. So I was jigging up on top of him. He came in and was pretty pumped about the whole situation. Whoa. He knocked so much slack in it. Because he's a white crappie. <laughs> Could have predicted that. A little white. White crappies are so fun. They're like the smallmouth bass of crappies. Not bad. Yeah, to say a crappie won't eat a eighth ounce pinhead, I would say they do. That thing is gone. Well, I'm figuring if I hit this bluegill in the head enough, he might bite. <laughs> ah, he did. I think it's a crappie, actually, but. Nope, it was a bluegill. I was right. If I hit him in the head enough, he would bite. And he did it. Tika minnow can't catch bluegills. That's a pretty bluegill. Uh, huge, but pretty one. Oh yeah.
What's the solid eater? Oh my god, he got it. Oh, the Tika Minnow. That's a nicer white. Oh my gosh, and just has the Tika absolutely torqued in its mouth. Boom. It's a nice little whitey. I'll let that guy go. Oh. Huh. Got a white. Cool. Okay. Now I'm intrigued. <laughs> Maybe some of them are crappies. I don't know what the heck's going on down here, dude. Destroyed the tea coming on. Another eater. Booyah. And yeah, we're getting out of here. <laughs> we caught a bunch of eaters. This place is really slowing down. I don't know if this front moving in has really shut things down. This fresh snow on the ice maybe jacked it up. I don't know. But it is not really banging. So it was fun though. We did get on some fish and we knifed a bunch. So we're gonna go back to the uh well, Bart's house, I guess. We're gonna go back there, cook up some food. We got a cool recipe we're gonna do tonight and actually get off a lake before it's dark for one. So that should be cool. <laughs> Maybe we'll actually get some sleep tonight. <laughs> Welcome back to the frozen kitchen. We had an awesome day on the lake. It was actually super fun out there. Uh, we were just banging eaters. No real big ones or anything, but we had a good time out there. And that wind started kicking up and we were getting absolutely roasted by the wind. So we kind of bailed from that, but we're back at Bart's house and uh, we're gonna do some cooking here. We got an awesome recipe for tonight. But the first thing I wanna talk about before we get into any of that is break your PB. This beer right here is available all over the state of Minnesota. We'll pop a list up here with all the places that it's available and this beer is only available to the end of February. So if you're watching this right now and you'd like to snag some of this for yourself, check some of those places out. It's only gonna be a seasonal beer. So if you wanna get it, get it right freaking now. But we're gonna get into this cooking. We're making crappie melt flatbread pizzas. And uh, I'm really stoked for this one. And my favorite thing about this is that they don't take very long and we're absolutely starving right now. So we're gonna get into this. I'm gonna show you exactly how to break this down and we're just gonna get into it, make these up right here. Let's go. Okay, so first step to this is cooking the fish. So I have some fillets here. This is about a pound of crappie fillets right here. Um, these are ones that we caught yesterday, so they've been kind of just chilling in the fridge. They're all thawed out, ready to rip. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just lay them all out on this cutting board right here, drizzle them with a little oil, and then we're gonna season them up. I have catch and cook seasonings. We love these. They're kind of good on everything. I have the, the whiteout and the all-terrain. And what I'm gonna try to do with this is kind of make like a almost like a blackening seasoning. So what I'm gonna do is season these pretty heavily. I got a pan behind me on the stove and heat that up, a little oil in there, just get it cooked. So these are actually gonna cook in the Traeger too. So we're gonna cook this fish, just kind of pre-cooking it for the flatbreads. And then once they're all assembled, they'll go on the Traeger. And what I'm gonna do is just finish getting these seasoned up, get them in the pan, and uh, we'll be moving and grooving after that. So a little bit of oil, a little bit of seasoning into the pan. All right, so we got the fish all seasoned up. I got this pan preheated, a little bit of oil in there. I'm just gonna drop them in one at a time here. Doing it in batches, I don't wanna overload this pan just so it doesn't splatter like crazy. But keep an eye on it, I don't wanna burn the seasoning, so I kinda have it on like a medium high heat right now. So I'll probably do about three of these at a time. And these are like pretty solid crappie fillets. These are all like 12 inches, really nice <laughs> thick meat on them. So get these cooked up, fully cooking right now, and then they'll all just go in a bowl. We'll cool it down, break it up a little bit, and then finish making our uh, crappie melt topping. So get these cooked up and then we'll be ready to make the filling, make some flatbreads. We 
We got all that fish cooked up. It's smelling super delicious. It's starting to cool down. Uh, I probably shouldn't have put in this metal bowl because the bowl's super hot right now. But um, we just want the fish to just cool down enough that we can break it apart um, without it just being like super mushy. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm just gonna use the spatula, bust it apart a little bit. You don't have to like pulverize it because we're gonna mix this a little bit more still. And I'll just set that aside. And now what I'm gonna do is just roughly chop up. I got some dill, fresh dill, parsley, and green onions. So I'll do about equal parts of that, probably about a, a third of a cup or so each. Uh, you can kind of feel it out depending on how much fish you have. But just like I said, rough chop that. And at least for the dill, I try not to get the stems in there. That much. Just go right into our fish. I got some curly leaf parsley. You just don't want super big chunks of any of these herbs at all because we want to just blend into the fish and then the green onions. And for this, I'm just gonna use the green onion tops so you can just hack off the top, use the bottom for something else. We don't need it for this, so. And now what I'm gonna do is just kinda incorporate all those herbs into the fish. And there's only a couple ingredients left for this part of it, which is basically gonna, <coughs> basically gonna be the topping to our flatbreads. So for one, I have some shredded cheddar cheese. This is just sharp cheddar. And uh, I'm gonna be fairly generous with this because we want this, unlike a crappie melt sandwich or like a tuna melt type thing, where you might just put the cheese on top, we want this to just melt across the whole top of the flatbread. So I wanna put some cheese into the filling and then it'll also get topped with some more sharp cheddar. And then the last thing I'm gonna add is just some mayo. Whoa, jeez. So about a quarter cup of mayo into that. Don't want this to be too sloppy, but you can kind of, I guess, feel that out. Um, you don't want it to be too sloppy where it's just gonna like run all over the place, but you want it wet enough that you can spread it around with a spatula on top of your flatbread. So do that. I might add just a little bit more cheese to this so you can kind of see what that amount looks like, but. Uh, probably end up being about a half a cup of cheese into that whole bowl. Okay, filling complete. So I'm just gonna set that aside. I have some pre-made flatbreads here. That's the awesome thing about flatbreads is there's tons of them available. These ones are just a very plain like garlic flavored flatbread. So I like these because what we're gonna do is put them on a cast iron griddle in the Traeger. So I have that heating up to 475 degrees right now. Uh, you can put it to 500 if you can do you get it to there, but I didn't turn the knob far enough, so we're at 475. But you want it to be on a cast iron griddle because that's really gonna get the bottom crispy. So on a flatbread, getting the bottom crispy is the hardest part, especially on a Traeger. So throwing a cast iron on there will get the job done. So I'm gonna just build two of these. Uh, the griddle I have will fit to. So I'm gonna do two at a time. I got that filling, like I said, I added mayo to this. So instead of there being like a pizza sauce laid down on this, it's just gonna be this filling. So I'm gonna lay this on there pretty, pretty thick honestly and just cover the entire flatbread and then we'll top it with some cheese and then I have some Roma tomatoes I'm just gonna thinly slice these up lay them on the top and they are your start. super good and ready to rip. So I'm gonna take these outside. Like I said, the Traeger's preheated. I got it to 475 with the gr cast iron griddle laying on top of the grate. So we're gonna go out there, slide these on. They're gonna cook for probably like five to six minutes. It doesn't take real long. That cast iron's ripping hot. So it starts to cook the crust from the bottom and then the cheese is just gonna get nicely melted and we're gonna be eating. So ready to rip, get these out there on the Traeg. Okay, we just pulled these off, they're looking really good. It's super hot, but the crust is very, very crispy, which is great. That's exactly what we wanted. So I'm just gonna cut this into basically triangles and we're gonna let it cool just a little bit because otherwise I will definitely burn my mouth on it. But by putting it on that cast iron, it's gonna get very, very crispy, which is exactly the goal of this whole thing. Okay, we got these things absolutely dialed. They're looking awesome. They're still pretty freaking hot, but I'm still gonna give it a go because I, I can't resist. Oh yeah, that is dude, good. look at that. Right? My mouth. 
thought it's real hot. It's bomb though. Yeah, they are good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is an awesome way to use up crappies. Honestly, you could use any fish for this. It's super good. Anything from anything you catch in freshwater, salmon, anything like that, you could do the exact same recipe with. So making these fish flatbreads, highly recommend. Delicious, easy, and uh, I think anyone, whether they like fish or not, are going to crush these. So get to making these, get out there, catch some fish. We're making new game plans. We're changing things up. Stick with us. We got some serious things coming.